Yeah. All right, let's call this to order. Get going. First up is public comment. Anything not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to approval of the agenda. This rate will be done in five minutes. <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Consider approving prior meeting minutes. Move to approve. I have a motion to amend them. I know they're draft, but they're. I think there's a typo in there that says uh, in f I I sent I think it's five C, where it says that uh, Judy suggested we add Chester Police Department to the list, or it says actually it says that I suggested it, and in fact I think it was Judy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So with that uh, amendment, I would move to approve the draft minutes. So we had a motion to approve. Are you seconding that? Not as they're written because they're not accurate. No, I'm not seconding it. I'm making a motion to approve amended minutes as suggested by myself. I'll, sec right. I'll second her. So you're yeah. pulling your motion? Yeah, I'm pulling my motion, yeah. yeah. And seconding her motion. Seconding her, I said. If that's the correct way. Yeah. That's the correct way, but <laughs> not that we always do it by the book. <laughs> I think you'll satisfy Robert and his rules. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Review benchmarking exercise. Yeah, this one, we're still working through this. We were able to, just more of an update than anything to review. We've got square miles, road miles, population densities. So if you don't mind, you might want to hit for them. Oh, yeah. And um, and we were able to add the officer counts. We pulled most of them. Recording in progress. Timed it so I don't... <laughs> We were able to get most of that data from a VLCT annual report, but we've got to follow up with two of the departments from the study. So Bristol and Woodstock weren't in there. It makes sense given transitions and other things in terms of not having somebody report. So we've got all of that. It's broken down by categories. So in terms of when we looked back at our other sheet, we had simplified categories. We'll just have to figure out how to make the pieces fit, especially when a patrol officer might also be listed as a detective in some spots. So we're working through some of those pieces, um, and we'll have everything from every category right down to part-time officers, dispatchers, those types of pieces, if, if anybody has any has those. And then we'll follow up with some outreach on the other questions that you wanted to add. So we're still moving forward with that, just not as quickly as we'd hoped in the time between, but we've filled out a lot of, of the information there um, that, that we could and pulled from sources that are pretty common. So all the road mileage and stuff comes through, VTrans, Grand List come through, the Department of Taxes, VLCT for staffing. So as we stitch these things together, and then we'll, we'll augment with the outreach pieces. Those are really the ones that have to come next along with the budget ones. Those are the, the remainders. But we made progress. Good, good. So Any Trevor, I couldn't quite hear, but um, the first part of what you said, the very first part, but so do we not have an updated document? I, I've got one going. I don't have one t to share that has all the full pieces. We've added most of the staffing minus two of the departments that we've got to follow up with directly. And yeah, I heard I heard the rest of it. I just couldn't tell if you're looking at something or if you just don't have something that's ready to deliver. So I got that answer. Thank you. Yep. Any questions on that from anyone? No, I'll just point out, I think when I looked at our, um, and Judy, you'll be happy to know, I. I copied you and I now have this beautiful binder. Um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> and I actually reviewed some stuff. Um, but when I look at our uh, workflow, I, I think we're, you know, we're still sort of ahead of the game a little bit. So I'm not concerned that we don't have that just yet um, because we're still in August. So Trevor, do you think that we're going to have that info before the September meeting? That's my hope. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, Super. Good answer. <laughs> we're all swimming right. for all we're worth. But. Review data and discuss buckets. 
So the one piece that got added and it got sent around yesterday that came to us from Sheila, um, last time you guys had talked about the different sort of data buckets as we start to break down our own data and think about to collect for others. And this is part of trying to separate the different pieces into what's law enforcement, what might we be able to handle through some sort of different mechanism, whether it be you know embedded social worker types with outside organizations through community resource officers. So Sheila had provided some of that data specific to SafeLine responses in Randolph. It looks like it's just fiscal year data in the in the aggregate. Um, I don't know to what extent they keep it. You know, as we've tried to place call volumes by location a little bit, I I don't know if they do that the same way as we're able to do through through the Valcor system uh, and those pieces. So. Um, this just gives you a sense kind of of overall need in a, in a representative year. And then at some point as we close August, there'll be an update to those monthly statistics from through Scott's shop, and we'll try to add those to some larger analysis. At some point, we'll take that dot mapping example and try to make something else of it just to maybe show in a geographic form yet again. Um, as we get better than with with that piece, um, we're going to need to just get some of this data clarified. Mm -hmm. So at the top we have forty one users, but we have a total of forty two in the female male bucket. Yeah. So either we have we have something funny there, but we have three hundred and three services given for forty one users. Mm -hmm. but some of these have to be where people came in for multiple services and they got counted twice, but you know. That's almost, what's that, nine services per person? Yeah. It, that checked in. Like the, it's good data as far as knowing that what the kind of basic breakdown is, but it's not, it's a little bit tough to understand. So well, I, I was wondering about the, um, you know, it is only broken down to male, female, and I'm sure there are people who identify, don't identify as that, and they who have received services. I mean, is my guess, but so I've asked Sheila, like, do they keep track of that? And is that why those numbers are off? Well, they're already high for the number of users, so that would make them even more off. I, I, not speaking for Sheila in any shape or form, but just taking a really quick look at this. You know, if you know if somebody comes in and utilizes their services for, say, a domestic assault uh, emergency order, and then came back to their office for follow up or go to court, it would probably be you know kind of listed. So it's that three hundred three number is probably more you know the same user utilizing different services is my assumption with just looking at. This data. I would right think here. so. The actual like number of contacts with anybody. Right. Yeah. That's my guess too. So does this any question? So like the domestic violence it said it had eighteen in the year. Did the Randolph Police Department respond to eighteen domestic violences in that year? So uh, a lot of this stuff too is that it may not even get reported to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So they may be in a domestic situation that didn't rise to a level of calling law enforcement or they just didn't call, didn't report it, right. but they sought out the services of SafeLine for assistance for a uh, relief from abuse order or something to that nature. So we've responded to quite a few and VSP has as well, but they may not have utilized services or they've utilized services, but they didn't have any law enforcement interactions. I asked that in the email chain, you know, just like, mm -hmm. you know, would there be a corresponding, you know, to me, if SafeLine got a call, but SafeLine, okay, someone's having a domestic violence situation, does SafeLine actually call the police department and say, hey, we got a safe, we got, we got a person reporting that there? I think only if the person wants them to. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I just so didn't know how that and works. And the problem is, is we so don't know what that overlay is. Right, right, right. right. And, so we, and, we offer those services. Uh, you know, if we have a victim from, you know, any kind of domestic uh, situation where you offer safe line services, whether they call them or not, that's up to that victim or, or those people. Uh, we don't force feed those services. I just know because like an assault is an assault, right? You know, so that's, to me, that's but it, some kind of crime. <laughs> but if it's not reported, you know. Right, right, right. 
it, it's hard to respond to something you don't know what's happening. But it also is hard to take this data and figure out what the demand would be for law right. enforcement, Absolutely. which is what we're trying to look at here because we have no way of knowing of this data what portion of it is the overlap. That's why that's why I asked the question. Is, you know, yeah. so would you have a I mean, more I, response I understand there's calls. a need for it. I'm not saying there isn't a need for this service, but I, it's hard to say what percentage of of the in a lot of this if it's is the services afterwards right helping them get the restraining order helping them find a place to live helping sure, them do sure. that that yeah. wouldn't fall i mean it's a support service it's needed it balances out that full picture but it doesn't really come over into what does our police service look like right. that's well, where i think the the challenge is is figuring out what right. that yeah. I think where thought, those circles overlay. Yeah, we've always thought of the buckets, I think, so far as an individual line of discrete buckets. But some of them are going to be, you know, the Venn diagram, where there's that sort of shared space where two buckets kind of come together. And it can, and it might be part of one and or both. Or um, multiple. Yeah, you and can find the same be, person yeah. in multiple places. I had a logic class in college and that's the first time since then I've had a chance to draw a Venn diagram that's and use it. That's why you it. So That's why I went for it. Yeah, that was my moment. <laughs> <laughs> Wait 20 years for that. And paid so, how much? So this, this leads me to have about more than one Venn diagram would suggest we go. So this leads me to think about a couple of things. One thing that we had already talked about, do, should we, do we want to talk to our high utilizers to find out what they think they need for police services. And number two, when we get our August stats, would it be helpful if instead of by date and time, or in addition to by date and time, they were broken down by what the nature of the call was? So, you know, 911 hang ups, domestic violence, uh, suspicious, citizen assist, um, that way, so you can see how many. It, it, I think it's just a different visual, that's all. Yeah, and I don't know if Falcor does that. I'm not. Spillman it, does, but I don't know if Falcor I, I does. I don't know. I'm good. I will double check it. Okay. I, I don't know if Falcor can break it down to those kind of pieces. Okay. Maybe. I, I don't have a definitive answer for right. it. Right. I don't know if Falcor groups them either like that. I just know that Spillman does, and sometimes it's easier to look at that. You can say, oh, there was only one 911 hang up all month long, but there was 10 citizen assist, and they're all in a group. I might be even able to, if Alcor can't, we might actually be able to use that data wrapper program that created a little map, has different sort of chart or other applications. And we can translate essentially into Excel and back into that. Right. And you have a color code by category. Um, so it's a little bit of extra yeah. massage for the data, but not bad. Yeah, because to some extent, the date and time data is subjective because it depends if there's somebody on duty or not. It might be good to go back to Sheila, too, and see if they break it out by how many cases actually involve law enforcement. And, I don't know and we're talking 41 answer. people. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if she's going to have that answer for you. But we don't know until we yeah, that's true. No, just It might be just a, mm -hmm. hey, like, mm -hmm. any idea. It, like, her guess on what percentage it is is probably more accurate than our guess. Oh, without a doubt. Because we're an extreme wag, where she's an actual educated wag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Can I? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, so part of this, though, is um, I think we're getting ideas of what the services are. I don't know if we need to get wrapped up in exact numbers all the time, because I think what we know from this information is domestic violence is an issue in our society, in our town. And so I don't know if we need exact numbers, right? We just want to make sure that that is a service that's covered, right? Are you guys all frozen me? No, I'm just thinking about what you said. And I, I mean, you know, we'd like the data to be accurate if we're going to be telling people what we've learned. And, it, you know, of course, if it's not possible, uh, we could ballpark it. I think, you know, I think that's what we're talking about. I don't think anybody disputes that we need um, some kind of service to handle domestic violence response. Um, 
it's the it's the other data. I mean, what Joe asked about was, you know, how much of it is in the in the. Uh... Kristen, I don't want to interrupt you, but we just lost you guys for a while, so we're back. We lost you when Stephanie was talking, and we were uh, the conversation of two cases a year versus a hundred cases a year makes a big difference, and then you guys were gone. Okay, sorry. What I was saying was, we we I mean it's certainly preferable to have accurate data if we can't get it we can ballpark it i don't think anybody disputes that we need some kind of service to respond to domestic violence cases to that particular bucket um i think the bigger the question i think that joe posed on email was about do these calls happen within the police dist current police district or outside of it It looks like you guys keep dropping the call or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just leave it like this and see if this, we're on twice, but it seems to be working, so. I'll try that again, Kristen. <laughs> Third time's a charm. I'm going to say, yes, Stephanie. Um... We all, I think we all acknowledge domestic violence happens and we need some kind of a response to it, whether we have uh, if we can't get accurate data, we could ballpark it. It sounds like we could at least do that. But that my pro point was that Joe posed the question earlier about what happens within the current police district versus what happens outside of the current district. And that's really um, some data I think that we'd want to know if there's a way to get that. And I think that was maybe the data mapping that was being talked about. Um, my question is that. more based upon my own mind, service level. Because one of the things that I was talking about, if they do, if, it, if the recommendation of the committee is to, is to increase the services outside the district, make it town wide, the other question was, is what the service level was going to be needed outside the district versus inside the district, and how are folks paying for that outside the district versus Correct. inside the district? Yeah. So that's that. That's why I asked the question. Because it's always been the reason this committee I feel started at the select board is there was some thought of the possible town town wide, you know. So so with that in in mind, I think it's important to understand what happens outside the town versus what happened or outside the district versus what happens inside the district i'm going to set if you're going to sell a plan you have to have all that that, that understanding I, I feel and there was conversation about the first question is what does the service need to look like and then what is that right you know is it does it go town wide and then if it does what does that service level look like right you know, we had some people making comments during the board meeting of well, if you're going by their house three times a day, you better be going by my house three times a day. And I was like, <laughs> and you go in and you look at the end of Clay White Road. Right. If you're right, going to send somebody right, up absolutely. there three times a day to drive the, the loop, I mean, you're going to be drastically increasing. I have a lot of questions about it. And um, not, th not that I don't want people to be safe. That isn't the thing. The question is, is you know, if, the, if it's going to come out to where it's equivalent Based based upon the value of your house. Matter of fact, the reappraisal guy was there in my house today. Uh, left left me a note that he wants to look inside. So okay, great. I'll give you a call. But anyways, but I, I look at it as if it's going to come to that, then what's what's you know if it's equality of that paying for it, then you want the equality of service. If if that's going to get there, and that means your department is going to go up fivefold. Right, oh, 100, 120 miles of, of road in the town, roughly, 100 miles outside the district, and 20 miles inside the district. So if you're saying it takes, Scott, you're saying it takes five officers to take care of, and I, I wrote this facetiously long before this committee, but it, but it said if you're going to take five officers to take care of 20 miles of road, if you have five times more on the outside of the district, is it going to take another 20 officers to keep that level of service? 
I would suggest not. However, but, but really, if you look at it, if you want equal level like you're talking about, I was going to pass my house three times a day, right? You know? So, so anyway, so there's a lot of questions around that. I'm not going to be labored. We'll get there at some point, you know, talking about it. But, but I just, uh, that's, why, that's why I asked those, uh, those questions. Do we have any other organizations that potentially would have this type of data that we're not currently after? What does Claire anybody? Martin keep? I was going to say maybe yeah. Claire Martin, but I don't know what they put out for stats, if they can, in regards to services that they do for mental health services. Do we have data from towns, not just as similar in size, but, but data from towns that have separate districts? Similar size, give or take, you know, 1,000 people or whatever. But have don't have a that have a actual how we are presently with a district district and you know within the Waterbury being one Waterbury Center does not have a police district yeah. right you know but that, that that's one but it's a little bit larger than we are but still that's a, that, that that that's a thought so I think to have a you know to be equal mm -hmm. should we just not not just have the towns that have town wide coverage but what what's the data from towns that don't have town-wide coverage. It's probably going to be something like a Woodstock model as opposed to, say, the Waterbury, just because they have the contract with the state police. But in the Woodstock model, they've used some metric to assign percentages of cost mm -hmm. between the incorporated village, which owns the PD, right. and the town, which pays for that portion of it. Right. And there might be a similar arrangement. We'll have to see with the Rockingham Bellows Falls, where you also have that it's probably going to be the places with an incorporated village still inside of it um, that are going to be the most akin to what we do. So maybe a little bit with Manchester, though I think that's a town-wide PD um, as well. Just in thinking about that benchmark list. Mm. But yeah, it's a 60-40 split, but we can see how they arrived there and if it's data-based or just through... Sometimes these percentages are select boards and trustees, having been through the old Essex battle, sometimes they figure right. out the right. number they're comfortable with, and that's the cost share. Right. Yeah. So right. is it data-based, or is it just where they landed? Right. Oh. Another question in the end. So say you get to that database, and say they spend two cents per hundred outside the district and ten cents per hundred inside the inside. Well, to, to say make that model. You know, I, I guess I furthered my question a little bit was was um, we talked about schools at the last meeting, the school and resource officer and stuff like that, and they said, well, we want a resource officer that visits all of our schools in Brookfield and 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 wherever's in their school district, if you will. But Braintree's not paying, or, or, or Brookfield's not paying for this. Well, the yeah, resource yeah, office yeah, would yeah. be in the school budget then. Huh? The resource or, officer needs to be in the school budget then. Or at least partially. Yeah. I'd say fully. Because and, and, and then, then they, they can hit all the towns. Because it's not even mm -hmm. just Braintree and Brookfield. You have kids that come to the tech center that are from sure. a much wider circle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, just a, yeah. so can we get questions? back to Judy's question about whether we're going to invite what we, somebody termed the high utilizers? to tell us what they what their needs are? I don't know that we have anybody that agrees they're a high utilizer. We took quite a bit of heat when we used that phrase a few times. Um, but you were, whenever it was first used, you're talking about Claire Martin Center, Gifford, and the high school, or the, or the Southwest Supervisory Union, correct? Right. Yeah, there was some mention of some of the housing development areas too, and RACDC, but I don't know. That one seems to have dropped off some. If there's something else, we can call them. <laughs> I mean, we can reach out and oh. reignite the conversation. Frequent and... addresses. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't mean like that. A, no. 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 I, mean... I was talking about you know. <laughs> Businesses, yeah. right. and, and we do know we've yes. gone to some of these locations for more than veggie Van Goghs and sure. right, right, right. Needle drop, so we can <laughs> maybe start to pull uh, right. the actual responses and talk to those folks. 
Like what's what's uh, like the common? Do we, do we not have data from that from those addresses, or uh, do we want to actually hear from them? Uh, I, I was thinking, like you know, the <laughs> hospital, the school district, Clara Martin, actually hear from someone, whether they come to a meeting and speak or send us a letter, a memo. That's what I was thinking personally. Because you were thinking about, I'd understand your question was about need as much as it was about whether or not, had we been there and how many times for what? Right. Also, what's the perception of need? Right. Okay. Right. So there were the two pieces to it that I had heard in there. Um, I thought that was Lane and he does want to come talk if we want him there. So he's willing to come to the table for sure. Can, you, can we get the data of the breakdown of what you go to the school for? Yeah, I'm not sure that Lane really knows what the police might be used for at the school, frankly. I'd rather hear from Lisa I mean, Floyd. They, or uh, I'd rather hear from Lisa Floyd, frankly. I think she's what who's left, who's been there a while. I, I think if you're going to invite, uh, like, members say, up from the Orange Southwest, uh, Lisa Floyd and Ann Lane. Lane can speak for the district in regards to a school resource officer. And Lisa, like, why do I go to the school every day? Right. All right. <laughs> do you go to school, like, every day? It's over an exaggeration, but it feels like that, but yes. If I don't go at least twice a week, I'm... I'm that's and I'm sure it's a great amount of goodwill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but, but... Scott, like, I've heard from Lisa uh, recently over, over the, in the spring about you not going to the school, but you being used to go check on a kid who hasn't shown up at school, who uh, they're concerned about might be suicidal or depressed or something, and she's been able in the past to reach out and just have you do a like a well, welfare check. so yeah. and, it's not just going to the school it's how the school uses your services and you're correct it's not just the high school either i've done the same for the elementary school um much in the same circumstances uh if a kiddo is not so suicidal but the parents are just re uh, sending them to school and they're concerned for welfare i'll do a welfare check And that, that's considered a, a policing issue and not so much as a school issue. I don't know, when I was young, we had a truancy officer that we'd catch a skip in school. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so. He'd given up on that by the time I met him. <laughs> so if well, those are the two that you would use for there. On occasion, go out and knock on doors, but I think it's a safety concern. It, it is, and um, you, you, you do have a social worker. Ask, you know, hi hypothesizing about why they're there, why they might use the police, I would suggest to just to move this forward that we invite Lane and Lisa mm -hmm. to come to our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we give them, let's give them, let's decide how much time in the agenda we're going to give them. How about that? If, if we're going to do, like, say they have 15 minutes, can we do two or three different groups in a meeting? Might as well try it. Like, see if somebody from Gifford will come, see if somebody from Clara Martin will come. You've got 15 minutes. Tell me if you need a police department or not. Well, I think that they all will say that they do. I don't think that's a question at, at all. Oh, but it would be nice yeah. to see what the services are, because some of these, like right. mm -hmm. like what you're talking about, going and checking on a child, a resource officer with mm -hmm. a school could go do that. Mm -hmm. um, when Claire Martin needs somebody to go with their employee to check on one of their clients, they could have a staff person that's capable of doing that. Like. And some of it might be good to hear from them what mm -hmm. they're actually using it for so we can quickly say right. this service can be provided in this way, this service can be provided in that way and look at what the options are. That's, I think, some of where we're going to get into some areas that are going to maybe not go well. Well, in the know, last like weeks, actually, since the committee, committee has started up, um, Kristen has, has, has brought out that, that 
maybe some of these calls are not police calls, but they're mental health checks, right? You know, so, so it, it, you're right. It's very interesting to understand what that say Clara Martin needs, or what the school, what the what the school really needs, and is it truly a policing thing versus maybe something a bit different? Well, it's probably a two-way conversation right. too when they get here. It's their turn to say so, what they want and what right. they need and what they feel. Absolutely, it's, their, it's our turn to ask them about mm -hmm. what do you have, like what do you have on for current staff capacity right. of right. folks. Like what does Gifford have for security now or Right. Or those type of services, and no, I agree. I and you know, agree. some of the Kristen pushback. Would be the person from Claire Martin who would be able to provide some answers? Do you think? I think so. Yes. But some of our pushback okay. may be so, to um, Gifford. Who like, you need to beef up your to security. You know, this we're, isn't a role. Where I am at Central Vermont. We have a pretty prolific security department. Wait a minute. Sorry. Can I just get an answer to my question? Oh, I'm sorry. So close that loop. Right. <laughs> who's who's going to invite these to Trevor is going to? Okay. You know, we have a pretty prolific security and and camera systems, the whole nine yards. The, the police, the police are there. You know, I would suggest eight hours a day. <laughs> Gonna say there's a lot of it there. Yeah. 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 Do we want to try to do yeah. three if we're talking about the school, Clara Martin? Who else do we want for next time? Yeah, I was gonna go through the hospital too. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they'll be told they've got 15 minutes on our agenda each, and um, if they choose, what? if they choose to, if they if they choose, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. I ended up walking next to Dan Bennett at the last mile ride thing, and he indicated he'd be willing to come if he's actually the one who knows the answers. But could we also ask VTC? It's a big campus; they have their own security, such as Gifford has their own. They have Gifford employs Hunter they North. They don't have much. Yeah, you, you know. <laughs> they can't get any help either. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. wondering, you know, do they have policing problems? Because that's an outside the district thing. To just understand mm -hmm. what what their utilization of say the state police or you know, I don't know how many times Scott you've had to go to VTC but to me that's just a I just know when they show up when they when they show so, up in the fall the beer cans start littering my lawn because I don't live too far away so I, I can say that I've been up to VTC recently and had actually this conversation with the director of public safety who was asking who do I call do I call you or do I call the state police right. Because if I call the state police, they aren't common. So who do, I, who do I call? And I just did the same thing with McDonald's today. Right. And the barn. You know, it's just one of those parts and pieces. Right. Because, you know, the bar, uh, McDonald's last, uh, yesterday morning had a overdose issue and VSP wasn't common at all. What would we call? Right, right. What would we call? Interesting, I saw the state police today. There's someone stopped on East Bethel Road in front of the college. Mm -hmm. So they were out pounding pavement yeah. because they were looking for somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been stopping a lot of vehicles for minor things, like inspection stickers and things like that, which, it, like, makes no sense to me. But they're, they're, they're looking for they're, somebody. Yeah. And whatever excuse it is to get in the car. Yeah, but some of the ones they're pulling over, it's like, really? Like, these people are around here all the time. You meet them 100 times a day or a week on the road, and you're pulling them over now because of an inspection sticker? No, I don't. I yeah. have a neighbor. Actually, I used to have two neighbors, but I have a neighbor right next door to me uh, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a state trooper, and there's another one, another gentleman down at Solway, you know? And that's the only time I see them is when they're going back and forth to work. But then again, I'm not home all day. You, you, you know, I mean, they, they could be they could be busy in Randolph Center. I don't I don't know this. Do we want to make another um, possible list of people we might ask for like the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Even if we if we do or we don't, but like you said, VTC, maybe that's a possibility. Is there anybody else? I think we could do them in the same one. Fifteen minutes a piece. That's we an might hour. be able to. Do, if they stick to it. Do we want to, right, right. you know, invite local business owners? 
Would you invite the Vermont State Police? Uh, we could. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you know, we're just showing what's happening in the that's village good. if you only get the school, the hospital, and that, that's, that's what's in the district. So you, Currently, I mean, you guys had their stick, and it hasn't changed when they first came in to the select board meetings, and that stance hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. They've been saying the same thing though for several years. It's Not worse off now because of know. their staffing issues. Mm -hmm. They had those same staffing issues ten years ago, it's, and and they were they were kind of saying, look, we didn't want to. We, we can't respond as quickly as we'd like to. We have staffing issues. We have staffing issues. Um, not that they don't. They, they very well may. Do we I, want to give them specific you know, things that we want them to come talk to us about? Because I think you, you're right. If we say, just come in and tell us your story, we're going to get the same thing we've already gotten. If you point what you're looking for so they have the opportunity to prepare for, you may have better results. So what are we hoping to get out of them? that we don't already have. To me, it's what is your real policing needs? Not truancy. So they're giving us their, know. they're giving us their statistics. All right, we're getting those right now, what they're doing. Although yeah. the problem with that is we don't get a time that it takes. We don't get any of that from them. But what the we same thing get we get. Kristen, can I finish, please? Oh, sorry. What we don't get from them is the time commitment side, right? You get the one domestic violence. That could take 15, 20 minutes because it was two kids pounding on each other. Or it could take four or five hours if you got to help that person find a place and wait for services and write up a report or go to, to a court filing and all that. So I think that's where our, my struggle is on when we look at what the what the time commitment is for these actions. Data is good, but a tally mark doesn't really give us the full story of staffing and resource needs. But it's next to impossible to quantify that, put a number on that. I get that. I just am wondering, yeah. like, when we look at some of these folks and we talk to them about what their what that need is, if we can get them to kind of quantify that, like... Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that time demand? I don't know. Kristen? I was just going to say that I, I think what you will get, uh, at least from my, just my own expertise solely with mental health calls, uh, rather than speculate about Claire Martin having staff who could respond and provide the safety stuff, we will get actual you know their own experiences that that all none of us are maybe aware of about why they need police to go with them and i think they they should be able to quantify the average length of time for those times when they do need police if they're for specific things like having to write a warrant or having to um get somebody to the hospital so you know i i just think it's um and the same thing for the school about you know what 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 their needs are i i i feel like it would be beneficial because the data doesn't tell us that and i could speculate all i want about why the either the the school or gifford needs uh feels like they need a somebody in a uniform with a with some powers to be up on their campuses um but i, I don't actually know and so i'd really like to hear from them if we think that they're um utilizing a lot of services, or if we're going to be in a position where we might want to ask them to contribute to the cost. I, um, somebody just started to speak and you came up. Stephanie, you're up. muted. Can she unmute or Trevor? Yeah, she has can her. unmute herself yeah. when she wants to speak. Um, so we started with a list of other organizations that we might want to hear from, and all we had was VSP, where we talked about needing to get 
a little bit better to find what we want from them. Are there any others? Hi, this is Sheila, and I, I'm sorry I joined late, but I got, I'm out of town and I couldn't get internet. <laughs> so, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, if you had questions on SafeLine, I can answer. I'm happy to, but I also am thinking that might be someone we want to hear from, and I'm sure Linda Ingold would be happy to zoom in or come to our meeting if that's something the committee would like. I can arrange that. Sheila, one of the comments, uh, what we were looking at on this was how it overlays with law enforcement. So when you have uh, 41 service users, how many of those actually needed law enforcement services versus were there to get services without involving law enforcement? Is that anything they track or anything that they could take a better guess than we could at? I can ask them that question. And I know Joe had asked whether they were in the village or out of the village, and I have no way of knowing that. Um, um, but those two questions I can ask if there's an easy way for them to, to get that. Okay. Do we have any other organizations people can think of? Chief, do you have any? I think you're covering the the top ones all the way around. Um, you're, you know, one of the other things are like businesses. Um, you know, the barn would probably be willing to come to this table. McDonald's would be willing to come to this table. Um, those two reach out to law enforcement often. You know, and they're in those prime locations of the interstate and all the above. Are there any other businesses in town that you frequent a lot? Uh, Rite Aid, Shaw's, I mean, Shaw's is technically outside the district, uh, but we get called there all the time because it's just on that cusp. Um, uh, Rite Aid is the biggest one for retail theft. Uh, Cumberland Farms is another big one for retail theft. Uh, recent vandalism hey, down on the uh, street. Crap, you let me in. I'm trying to. Rec I gotta get my daughter back her phone and try to get on my own because it seems like the only way. Up, oh, you did. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we can continue to grow that list as we continue working through it. Are there any other pieces of data or buckets? people can think of in the other format. The East Randolph site, such as the East Randolph store. I, I, I never um, hear if they have any problems. I'm just thinking that if you're trying to cover around what, what's happening, I just don't I know. I know that if, we have the business side of it. I think mostly, Scott can correct me if I'm wrong, I think mostly what you get over there are the spats with your neighbor and I just didn't know if they had similar retail maybe. theft that you you know maybe in a smaller scale because they're smaller than say Cumberland Farms in the village but do they, do they have those similar issues at I mean that's the only kind of business that we have over there in Floyd's right <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Well, got, um, you know? the guys that went into Greenwoods but I don't think I haven't heard of any issues there yeah that I don't even know what they're doing at Greenwoods you know I'll explain it to you. Um, but some of the retail theft pieces, when you see those crimes, they're going to correlate at some point to other activity. It's a support mechanism, and so you look for where those opiate and associated related things are happening, yep. and they tend to be located in little pockets. And that might be a question for the state police, because presently that's like, like state police coverage, right? Over in East Randolph and, and Floyd's store, per se. You know, so maybe the state police has some information. Like, you know, we've gotten calls, at least understand if they've gotten calls to, hey, 
the you know the East Randolph store or, or Third Branch or whatever it's called because it seemed to change na names a time or two in the last few years. You know, so yeah, you know, so the it just uh, maybe the state police mm -hmm. might have some information of where they've responded. I've never seen the police have to respond at Floyd's store ever, but that's not saying that maybe lately they have, you know, so, you know. Yeah, could be. Okay. Let's move on to um, discussing research follow-up and tasks for the next meeting. I think we've kind of hit the research a little bit with folks to come in yep. yeah, and finishing the data of comparables. Yep, we'll work on an invite list. We'll probably start with the sort of the major organizations first, um, and then we can either make it a rolling thing where folks are invited, you know, yeah. there's a segment dedicated, and as we sort of check through some of the other ones, um, there's some time to identify sort of the right contacts and if people need corporate authorization or anything to, to speak on behalf of an entity, they, they have a little time to get that. Scott, is there any benefit to talking with the state's attorney? But they didn't they take on some of the resources that Orange County had? So the no, no. sex Probably crime. Right now, the state's attorney is up in the air, and if if there is a state's attorney, he's been there about three days and won't know, <coughs> right. won't know anything. I was just going to say that it's a it's a newer uh, state's attorney, um, and he hasn't been there a lot long. He's still trying to get his feet wet, and it's questionable if he's going to even remain in that position. Does he have staff that have been there longer? Uh, he has an admin staff that is a Orange County resident. I don't know if she's really quite familiar with um, or allowed to speak to uh, Randolph stats. I don't know how that office works with that kind of information flow. Didn't the um, like the sex crimes unit go that direction? Oh, the SIU. Some of that. The SIU is no longer. Um, there's there's that's a couple of Yeah. yeah I uh, that's where it was going. Or it, it was. Um, you know, quite honestly, I would love to get it under my umbrella. Um, but the, the piece is not the funding, it's getting the uh, adequate detective mm -hmm. in that position. Okay. And that is hours and hours and hours of investigation. I know. Sex crimes. Yeah. yeah. Eight years I was wondering if they might have a good <laughs> bit of information about that. Yeah. Type of. But they kind been, of were in on it, some with safe line and whatever. But. Having been in that unit, uh, this was, you know, kind of a hotbed. Mm -hmm. And it was just in the town, not just the village, it was all in town. And usually about this time of year, you get ramped up for kids coming in and disclosing what happened during the summer or all the above. So this was coming into a busy time. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a present contract with... Orange County. Yeah. Even for outside the district, remember we had that small contract for outside yeah, outside the district. Them. So that the total thing went away yeah. when yeah. that went away. We only okay. have the we have the contract for the coverage outside of the town with the village department. Mm -hmm. Now, so to speak, I don't think there's any written contract, but Orange County was pretty clear they couldn't provide anything. So Would it be of any interest to? Because before they were in the village, would be any interest to, uh, to see if Bill Bonyak may want to provide what his lease's sort of assessment is or something of of outside the district of lease his, his time with that. I think we have the time right there too. Mm. To some extent, but all right. Yeah. If you decide you want them, we know we're fine. Okay. What do we have for follow-up and tasks for the next meeting? Keep doing the benchmarking. We'll have August's data, and we'll do the round of invites. And start to set those up. Hopefully we'll have at least three of those. Communications and correspondence? We set this up last time as an intake, and I haven't seen anything that's hit. 
the accounts we you know basically my email account folks have been steered to so there's anything for the committee that's come in through that don't all jump but the next item is adjournment <laughs> Nobody has anything else. I will make a motion to adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Everybody have a good evening. Yeah, thanks, folks. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hopefully, I can get this recording of this.